Essential tremor is a neurological disorder that affects about 2.2% of the entire U.S. population. So it's really, really common. And the main clinical manifestation, what we see in patients, is tremor, mostly affecting the hands, and mostly when the hands are in use. So when someone's brushing their teeth, or holding a glass or a cup or writing, but the tremor can also affect other body parts. So it can affect the voice, and someone can have a shaky voice. It can affect the head, they can have a shaky head, and it can affect even the legs occasionally. This is a diagnosis that is made clinically. So a neurologist would sit down with a patient, take a history, learn about the features of the tremor, and then perform a neurological examination. There is no diagnostic test for essential tremor. There's no blood test. There's no brain scan that you can get. It's just time spent talking to a movement disorder neurologist or even sometimes with a general neurologist. We've noticed that there are three main patterns of progression. One in which individuals get the disorder early in life and it progresses a little more quickly. Another in which they get it early in life and it stays relatively quiescent, very mild for many years. And it's only when they hit their 60s or 70s that it starts to really worsen. And then a third pattern where people only get it when they're in their 60s and 70s. And that's probably the most common pattern. The main manifestation of essential tremor is that it's a disorder of involuntary movement. Uh, the tremor that we've been speaking about but we've been learning over the last decade or so that there are a variety of other issues that patients can face. And these can range from cognitive problems to psychiatric problems to sensory problems. And even the motor problems are not all restricted to tremor. So these can include changes in the way people walk and get around. Essential tremor can look a lot like Parkinson's disease, and it can also look a lot like a neurological condition that we refer to as dystonia. And one of the things that we do as neurologists when we take a history from a patient, and when we do a neurological examination, is to try to tease apart which one of these three disorders we're dealing with. And they do differ in terms of what we would see on examination or what a patient would tell us that they're experiencing.